topographical capture will vary based on the relationship between the forehead, eye and nose for each patient. Some patients will require a head adjustment of the chin and forehead. As depicted here, this could be forward, or backwards. The head may also need to be manipulated horizontally to achieve the ideal scenario for capture where the cone is sufficiently close for capture. As shown here, the head may need to be tilted to the left or to the right. It is also important to note that when the cone comes close to the cornea that the lid should be completely out of the way so as to avoid decreased capture area and shadows of the placida myers. A cotton bud, lid retractor or finger manipulation of the lid can aid this. Remember, a good head position when setting up a patient on the corneal topographer will allow for easier capture of all corneal topography. Once we have achieved an ideal head position, we need to direct our attention toward the capture screen and look at the exact position of ocular fixation. The first example here shows the patient looking directly down the middle of the black dot in the middle of the camera. For this individual, the myers of the placida rings are not centralised within the limbus. If we ask the patient to look at the outer edge of the first ring towards the nose, we see the myers are a bit better, but not aligned within the limbus. We need to ask the patient to look at the outer edge of the second ring. In this example, we are getting close to centration, but we are still not there. Finally, we ask the patient to look horizontally at the outer edge of the third ring toward the nose to achieve a centralised topography. It is important to note that the capture percentage in the top right hand corner of the screen is not indicative of data quality captured. This is a measure of the machine's accuracy when capturing. Once we have the fixation centralised, we need to look at the data quality. This is where we want to analyse for ring jam before saving the desired topography. In this example here, we see that all of the rings from the centre to the periphery are intact and are of good quality. However, in the second example, we see the myers are not intact, and the placido disc image shows ring jam. Both of these captures showed an accuracy in the top right hand corner of 99%. Yet, the former will yield better quality data. Once we have achieved an ideal capture, we need to alter the colour scale to best match the data. This allows us to better see detail of the captured data. This can be done in Medmont by manipulating the custom scale. If we look at the top left map, we see the blue colour is on the nasal side of the left eye. This means that the peripheral rings are not centralised within the limbus. Whereas if we look at the bottom right image, we see that the blue colour is spread evenly between the nasal and temporal side. This is ideal. For these maps, we click Custom and manipulate the minimum scale to better show the optics of this axial power map. Accurate corneal topographical capture and assessment has become a requisite in all busy contact lens practices in recent times and will shape the future of clinical practice. Thanks very much for watching this video.